now we are going to go to the next chapter or uh, uh, before beginning the next chapter children a good day to each one of you hope you all are doing good now today we are going to learn about the birds we are going to learn read understand and enjoy a session on birds birds are also known as feathered friends what are they known as feathered friends i love this term okay children so i guess you are getting to upgrade your vocabulary by the term feathered friends please note it down it's a lovely term got it now we begin with the warm up session let's see what does the warm up session have for us it has identify and label the different parts of the bird that help to fly eat and perch now let us see what helps it to fly it is definitely these lovely wings w i n g s great and what helps is helps the bird to eat what the helps it is known as the beak and what helps it to perch they are known as the claws okay and feet got it claws and feet did you get now looking ahead we will have a lovely session on the feathered friends okay let us look what are we going to learn interesting in this lesson or topic what are we going to learn we are going to understand the different types of beaks my gosh and how they help the birds and know about the different types of claws in birds and understand how the birds fly isn't this interesting wow i'm just waiting to have a look at it and you know understand and seep it into my brains got it now we can see birds flying in the sky how many of you have seen birds flying in the sky isn't that a beautiful sight they are feathered animals that live on trees they can walk hop run and fly birds have different body types and features they eat different types of food some birds eat parts of a plant such as seeds grains and fruit while others eat flesh birds use their claws and beaks to catch hold and eat their food what do the birds use their claws and beaks for to catch hold and eat their food let us now what is the meaning of perch children it is mean to sit sit where it it means sit but where as on a branch all right that's an ideal term for perch okay the ideal term is perch now let us study about the various features of birds what are we going to study the various features of the bird what did we learn till now that they are also toothless animals got it okay so now coming to the beaks of the bird birds are birds are toothless animals they don't have teeth we had learned about this in the prior lesson too they have beaks to eat their food what do they have to eat their food they have beaks to eat the food the shape of the bird's beak is suited to the type of the food it eats now let us see the types of beaks got it birds strong sharp and hook the first type of beak is strong sharp and hook birds like eagles hawks kites and vultures are flesh eating birds they are also known as birds of prey let us see what is the meaning of prey prey means the animal that is hunted 
what is the meaning of prey it means the animal that is hunted they have strong sharp and hooked beaks to help them tear the flesh of other small animals now which are these birds again over here we have them they are the eagle the vulture and the hawk and what sort of beaks do they have strong sharp and hooked beaks all right so a beak is also called a bill or rostrum you need to note down this point it is also called as a bill or a rostrum got it and it's a lovely fact is children it's very interesting you should keep upgrading your vocabulary now we have finished with the strong sharp hooked beaks and who has them it's the eagles hawks kites and vultures they are also known as the bird of prey what are they also known as the birds of prey okay and what is the beak also called as bill or a rostrum did you get it r o s t r u m what is the spelling children r o s t r u m please remember this term this is a, a lovely term to upgrade your vocabulary got it now next we are going to go to the strong short and hard beak all right now who has strong short and hard beak let us see birds like pigeons finches peacocks and sparrows what do they eat what do they consume they eat grains and seeds they have short strong and hard beaks why do they have this strong short and hard beaks to crack open grains and seeds what do they have this strong uh, short and hard beaks for to crack open grains and seeds look at them look at their beaks have a look at their beaks this is the pigeon and this is the sparrow what sort of beaks do they have they have short strong and hard beaks isn't it interesting so we learned about the strong sharp and hooked beaks we learned about the birds having strong short and hard beaks now we are going to go to the curved beaks now what are we going to go to the curved beak before we go to the curved beaks let us just go through these again the strong short and hard beak birds which are they pigeons finches peacocks and sparrows and what do they consume grains and seeds now next we are going to go to the curved beak okay birds such as parrots and parakeets what do they eat nuts and other hard fruits like walnuts they have hooked beaks to help them crack open their food can you see that so which are the which are these birds parrot and the parakeet with their lovely beaks can you see it very good now next we finish with the curved beak bird now we are going to go to the strong chisel shaped beak what are we going to go to the strong chisel shaped beak and who has this my my see it's a lovely woodpecker see its beak it is like a chisel all right now what is a chisel children a chisel is a tool with a flat steel or blade with a cutting edge this is used by the person who makes furniture at a home and who is this person who uses this it is a carpenter got it now birds like woodpeckers have sharp long and pointed chisel shaped beaks what do they use their beaks for let us see to they use their beaks to poke holes what is the meaning of poke what does poke mean to push a pointed object quickly into something 
you feel now when somebody pokes you see poke like this into the poke holes into the hard trunk of trees and pull out insects to eat did you know this fact my god it's so interesting it's a lovely fact isn't it see how i think you should uh, you know uh, watch more of a national geography channel or something of that sort you visit and you can surf the net and see how the um, what is that uh, uh, the woodpeckers do this thing of poking holes into the hard trunk of trees and then pulling out insects it's so interesting i would love to watch it okay now we finished with the strong chisel uh, chisel shaped beak and who has it it's the woodpecker okay now next we are going to go further to the long and pointed beaks birds like hummingbirds and sunbirds also have long and pointed beaks to suck nectar from flowers they put their beaks inside the flowers to suck nectar from them look at that long slender pointed beaks this is a lovely term huh? i love this word slender okay so upgrade your vocabulary your children L understand and uh, you know remember this word slender okay now we what were the long pointed beaks who has them hummingbirds and sunbirds and what do they use these beaks for to suck nectar from flowers all right now next we are going to go to the broad and flat beak birds all right now which are these birds what are birds like ducks and geese have broad and flat beaks with holes on its sides these birds take in the muddy water through their beaks along with the muddy water insects worms and some water plants are also taken in the muddy water flows out through the holes while insects worms and plants are retained inside the beak so interesting isn't it the water flows out through the holes but what remains in their mouth is the can you see this holes it goes out through it okay and what remains is the insects worms and plants and that is how the food they collect their food isn't this also interesting very good children now let us move to the broad and short beak okay now what did we learn let us uh, recollect once again broad and flat beaks who have the water birds and which are the examples for the water birds ducks and geese got it now broad and short beak birds like swallows have broad and short beaks which are sticky inside while flying these birds keep their mouth open tiny insects get stuck inside their mouth and the birds swallows them and the birds swallow them okay now can you see this is a swallow okay this is a bird okay very good and what sort of beak does it have a broad and a short beak can you see this beak here it is broad and it is short now let's see the fact is a spoon bill has a spoon shaped beak lovely isn't it see this beak away it's it's like having a shape of the spoon it is used to collect what tadpoles and other small water animals isn't that interesting too now here what is the question here that we have what would happen if a humming bird had a hook beak what would happen it would not be able to suck nectar from the flowers simple isn't it great i let us move further then we have the claws we are going to learn about the claws we finish with the beaks now we are going to go to the claws 
Okay? Claws help the birds to walk, hop, run, hold on to branches, protect themselves from their enemies and catch their food. Different birds have different types of feet and claws. Did you get it? What is it? What are claws? What do, how do claws help birds? Claws help birds to walk. To walk, hop, run, hold onto the branches, protect themselves from the enemies and to catch their food. It protects them from the enemies and also helps them to catch the food. Different birds have different types of feet and claws. Now flesh eating birds. What about flesh eating birds? Flesh eating birds like eagles and vultures have very sharp claws known and what are the sharp claws called children? They are called talons. What are they called? Talons. They use these talons to tear into the meat or to catch live prey like the rats. Toads and small birds. Got it? Which are the flesh eating birds? They are eagle and vulture. And what sort of claws do they have? They have sharp claws known as talons. Got it? And what do they use this talons for? To tear into meat or to catch ripe prey like rats, toads and other small birds. Can you see it over here? See how it's catching its meal. Got it? And these are the claws. The eagle's claws. Alright. Now, perching birds. Next, we have we finished with the flesh eating birds. Now, we are going to go to the perching birds. Perching birds like sparrows, minas, crows and finches have three front toes. And one toe at the back. The claws in the toes help them to grip branches or wires. What does it help them? To grip. Now what do we understand by the word grip? Grip means to take hold of tightly. Got it? Now that was it about the perching birds. The perching birds have three front toes and one toe at the back. Did you get it? Okay. And what are the examples for them? They are the sparrows, the minas, the crows and the finches. Great. Now next we are going to learn and understand about the scratching birds. Birds like hens and roosters have very sharp claws that help them to scratch and dig into the ground and bring out buried insects, worms and seeds. Got it? Now, which are these scratching birds that we have? They are the hens and roosters. Did you get it? Very good. Now next we are going to go to the climbing birds. There are birds which climb too. Birds like woodpeckers and parakeets are climbing birds. You will find them climbing up the trees. They have two front toes, toes and two back toes. The front toes point upwards whereas the back toes point downwards. Isn't this interesting children? It's an interesting fact. In fact the whole lesson is so interesting. I have learned such a lot today about birds along with you. These help them to climb and cling onto the trees, onto the trunks of trees. That is great, isn't it? Very good. See this woodpecker and its claws. This is a woodpecker and these are the claws. Got it? Now, let's see what's here. An oar is a tool used to move a boat in water. What is the similarity between an oar and the feet of a duck? Now, this is what you have to search and find out. 
great okay now we finish with the climb we finish with the claws of the flesh eating birds we finish with the claws of the perching birds we finish with the claws of the scratching birds we finish with the claws of the climbing birds now we are going to go to the swimming birds let's see wh what more we are going to learn about them water birds such as ducks and swans have web feet that help them to swim in water what do the water birds have? Which are the water birds? Ducks and swans. And what do they have? Web feet. And how do these web feet help them? They help them to swim in water. The three toes in the front are joined by the skin forming a web. Now let us see what is the web in the bird. See these are the ducks and this, these are its webbed feet. Okay, the skin connecting the toes of some birds and other animals. Got it? Next, we learnt about the swimming birds. Which are the swimming birds? What, what is the speciality of swimming birds? It is that they have webbed feet. Alright, and it is uh, examples of duck and the swan. Okay, now we are going to go to the wading birds. We finished with the scratching birds. We finished with the climbing birds. What was the speciality of the climbing birds? They have their toes point upwards and which are those toes which point upwards? They are the front ones and the back toes point downwards. What is a, uh, a great example for climbing bird? It's the woodpecker here. Okay, then we also finish with the swimming birds. The swimming birds examples are ducks and swans. And what do they have? They have webbed feet. Did you get it? So, scratching birds are done, climbing birds are done and the swimming birds are done. Now, we are going to go to the wading birds. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what is the speciality of the wading birds? Let us have a look as we read these lines. Birds like wings, herons and stalks have long legs along with spread out toes. These birds can wade through muddy water without getting drenched. Now look at this. This is a heron and these are its claws. And what is so beautiful about them is that they have long legs, okay, and their toes are spread out. And what happens? They can wade through muddy water, okay, without getting drenched. How great that is, isn't it? So, what is the speciality again? They have long legs with spread out toes and great examples are cranes, herons and stocks. Did you get it? Now we are going to go on further as to how birds fly. The body of a bird is designed in such a way that it can fly easily. It is shaped like a boat, narrow in the front and back and broader in the center. This is referred to as a streamlined body. What is it referred to as a streamlined body? The pointed head and the beak help the bird to cut through the hair, air. Birds have hollow bones. What do birds have children? They have hollow bones. This makes their body very light and allows them to fly for a longer period of time without getting tired. We were wondering, no, isn't it, that how do birds fly for such a long time? And now we came to know the secret. The secret is that they have hollow bones and these hollow bones makes their body very, very light. We have to thank the creator of birds for this, isn't it? A bird has wings that help it to fly. The wings are attached to the body with the help of very strong muscles. Okay, in order to fly, the birds move with their wings in two types of movements. That is, one is the upward stroke and the downward stroke. The upward and the backward movement of wings is called upstroke. 
the downward and the forward movement of the wings is called downstroke my god so interesting so what did we learn here streamlined body we learned about the streamlined body then we learned upstroke then we learned downstroke that was interesting too the tail of the bird helps it to change directions while flying see this amazing thing that we learned today we learned about how the birds fly and see this is the upstroke and this is the downstroke lovely isn't it this is going up then it comes down see the bird in flight this is how their flight takes place up then down beautiful isn't it now what was the meaning of wade to walk through the water or other liquid with some effort with some only some effort all right now check point 1 state true or false birds are toothless i had told you earlier to remember this so it is a true t r u e a duck has holes on the sides of its beak that is also true okay a bird has a very heavy body that is false a vulture is a seed eating bird definitely not false herons have very short legs that is again a false a bird can fly using its wings that is true now we finished with the beaks and everything and now we are going to come to see as to what are the feathers of a bird got it we are going to come to see as to what are the feathers of a bird let us see some interesting um, matter about them wings of a bird are covered with feathers feathers are important part of a bird's body birds have three types of feathers one is the body feather then one is the flight feather and the other one is the down feather my gosh that is so interesting three types what are the three types of feather children three types of feather three types of feathers are body feathers flight feather then down feather that was interesting isn't it all right so let us see and how are the feathers feathers are soft feathers are soft and fluffy and they keep the bird warm well, how do the what is the i could say what is the job if somebody asks you what is the actual uh, work of the feathers it keeps the body a uh, bird's body warm okay they are soft and fluffy now let us see about the body feathers they cover the exterior of a bird's body what does exterior mean on the outside of the body body feathers okay exterior on the outside of the bird's body these feathers often have bright color patterns body feathers give shape to the bird's body okay what do they give they give shape to the bird's body flight feathers these feathers are large in size they are found in the wings and in the tails flight feathers are used for flapping providing balance 
and help in changing the direction during flight. Now we finished with the body feathers, we have learned what do the flight feathers do. What is it again? The flight feathers used for flapping, providing balance and help in changing the direction during the flight. Now we will go to the down feathers. These are small, soft and fluffy feathers that are present under the body feathers. They help to keep the bird warm. A newborn bird has a lot of down feathers. That's interesting, isn't it? So here is what we learned so far was about the feathers of the bird. We finished with the beaks, we finished with the claws, then we uh, finished with the feathers of a bird which was really really interesting. Now we are going to move further to the nesting habits of the bird. Like how we have a home, the birds have nests. Okay, unlike human beings who give birth to babies, birds lay eggs. What do birds do children? Birds lay eggs. Alright, birds lay eggs. Many birds build their homes called nests. So birds, birds live in nests. Got it? Very good. Birds build nests to lay eggs. Why do they build bird, uh, uh, nests? Why do birds build nests? To lay eggs. The nests are built at safe places. Usually when one parent sits on it to keep the egg warm and hatch it. What is the meaning of hatch? To cause an egg to break in order to allow a young animal to come out. How lovely it is. Isn't it to watch a baby bird coming out from the egg. Okay. Well the other parents goes to search in search of food. Or protects it from the enemies such as snakes. What, what happens here? Usually when one parent sits on the on it to keep the egg warm and hatch it, the other parent goes in search of food. Like suppose the mummy is sitting on the egg, the dad goes in search of food. And when the mummy bird goes in search of something, the daddy bird sits on it. Isn't it interesting? So, to protect it from enemies such as snakes. After a set number of days, the eggshell breaks open and a baby bird comes out. This process is known as hatching. Interesting. This term, please learn it. I can ask you what is hatching. Isn't it? After what is hatching? After a set number of days, the eggshell breaks open and a baby bird comes out. This process is known as hatching. The parents feed the baby birds until they are strong enough to fly. Like how our parents to take care of us. Okay? Great. Now we learned about this. Now we are going to move further. And we are going to learn as to how birds build nests. Birds collect things like twigs, leaves, wool, cotton, straws, thread, pieces of cloth, paper and so on. My gosh, see what all they are collecting. They, they collect twigs, they collect leaves, they collect wool, they collect cotton, straws, thread, pieces of cloth paper and the list can go on. There may be a n number of things to it. They use these things to build their nests in places like trees, terraces and wall cavities. Now let us see what, is, what does this word cavity mean. In, uh, I mean when the birds build nests, huh? holes or empty spaces between two surfaces. What are Cavities, holes or empty spaces between two surfaces. 
let us take a look at the nests of some birds see this is a tailor bird look at its nest now nobody thought it but it really really builds a beautiful nest and i have seen the tailor bird's nest it is really really beautiful and i recommend each one of you in case if you cannot see it anywhere around was surf the net and look at the tailor bird's nest it is lovely okay the tailor bird uses its beak as a needle to sew this is s c w but what is the correct pronunciation sew leaves with materials like wool and thread this is the reason why it is called a tailor bird okay it what does it use its beak as a needle to sew leaves what is with materials like wool and thread see the see the thing that the tailor bird uses it sews the leaves using what wool and thread this is the reason why it is called a tailor bird it also uses cotton wool dry leaves to make its nest warm and cozy look i mean hearing about this i think so you definitely would want to see a tailor bird's nest even i feel like you know that i should come along with you all and really look at it okay here again i can say it's the beauty of god's creation then we have the weaver bird now what does a weaver bird use we will see it uses twigs and grass this nest is also beautiful isn't it grass to make a very beautiful and a strong nest the nest hangs from the tree and is made by weaving the grass in and out the nest has a tunnel like opening at the bottom of the nest which is used by the bird for entering and exiting the nest great isn't it see the nest of the weaver bird it looks lovely and hangs from the tree and is made by weaving grass in and out that means it weaves okay the nest has a tunnel like opening at the bottom lovely look at this which is used by the bird for entering and exiting the nest after the tail we learned about the tailor about the tailor bird's nest we learned about the weaver bird's nest now let's see about the swallow the swallow builds its nest using its own spit my gosh i didn't know about this the nest is made attached to rocks or wood and resembles the shape of a vase wow see the swallow's nest okay that's also beautiful and what does it you use it to build it its own spit and what uh, it is made attached to rocks or wood and it resembles a vase okay the woodpecker see this is a woodpecker builds its nest inside the trunk of a tree it uses its beak to create a hole inside the tree see this is the hole can you see the baby woodpecker here baby woodpecker here lovely isn't it and then we have the penguin the penguin leave lives in ice it collects pebbles and small stones look at the pebbles and the small stone to makes its nest this is the bird i guess it builds its nest on the ground and same as similarly even i just want to tell you even about the hen the hen lives in a man made uh, what you can say enclosure the hen lives in a coop got it that's it now we go to the checkpoint dash feathers are found in birds wings and tail dash feathers are found in birds wings and tail flight f let's unscramble these letters f l i g h t birds will dash to lay eggs what would this be it would be nests the dash bird uses its beak as a needle to sew leaves with materials like wool and thread which is the bird it is a tailor bird that's interesting 
okay dash is a process in which the egg shell breaks open and a baby bird comes out hatching that's nice the dash bird uses its own spit to make its nest which is the bird it's a swallow lovely isn't it now after the checkpoint too we are just going to come to the closure of the lesson let's glance through the brief summary as to what we have learned up until now and seep it into our cells into our brains i hope it was interesting birds are toothless feathered animals remember this term feathered friends huh? i don't know why i like it so much feathered friends Okay, birds are toothless feathered animals, they have different feeding habits, they have beaks and claws to catch, hold and eat food. Birds have different kinds of beaks that suit the types of food they eat. Different birds have different types of feet and claws. A bird's body is covered with three kinds of feathers. Body feathers, flight feathers and down feathers. Birds have, a special, have special body features that help them to fly. Birds have a streamlined body, wings, hollow bones and strong muscles. Birds build nests to lay eggs. I'm sure you have enjoyed a lot about the feathers friends and it was interesting for me to have a nice day.